So welcome to another Five Composers video and this time we've got a real treat for you and a slight twist on the format. The composers will be writing for classical soprano and harp and we've got two amazing musicians. We've got the fantastic soprano Mary Bevan whom I've worked with before. She was the lead soprano in my opera The Firework Maker's Daughter at the Royal Opera House and elsewhere. And she's now a huge star, she performs all over the world, even during pandemic. This is her just recently in a lockdown concert with the LPO. And our harpist is Eleanor Turner, who you may remember from the Electronic Music for Orchestra video I did, where she added her own solo harp take on the piece at the end. And that's actually how we got in touch and started talking and that led to this collaboration. So thanks so much Eleanor and to Mary for taking part in this. The twist this time is that the composers get to choose the text for each other. Is it going to be, uh, is it going to be hotly political? Is it going to be yeah. a <laughs> political hot take? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to have you read uh, various shirts from the people who stormed the Capitol and you have to... Here, no, what I'm really doing is... Um, <laughs> And I also asked them to choose one musical restriction, but this time it's all about the text and how we set it. So I hope you enjoy this new twist on the format. As you can imagine, putting together a video like this is a lot of work, and I've put together a full behind the scenes look at how it was made, including how I edit some of the scenes. And all of that is available on my Patreon page, so do join me there if you'd like to help support the channel. There's also a wonderful demo that one of the composers gave me, so do check that out if you're interested in seeing more. This sadness in my heart, it feels so the composers this time are quite an all-star lineup of YouTube musicians. We've got two old friends, Adam Neely and Ben Levin. And we're joined by the wonderful composer, pianist and singer, Amy Nolte. That made me so happy to hear. Oh, I just couldn't have imagined it like any nicer. And by 8-Bit Music Theory, who talks about the music in video games on his channel. And I must say that even if you're not interested in video games at all, his musical insights are often very deep, so it's really worth checking him out. So we'll start with him, and it was me that got to choose his text. So you're probably very nervous to hear what I've chosen for your words. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've heard all about the sea shanty stuff that's going on TikTok at the moment. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought you could use a couple of lines from the meme of the moment, the, the Wellerman sea shanty. So the opening of that is, There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was Billy a T. The wind blew hard, the bow dipped down. Oh, blow my bully boys, blow. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. So maybe from the first two paragraphs of that, you could find something. Ooh. I like that. Okay, this is quite mean, but the musical restriction is that you're not allowed to repeat any phrase. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll see what I can do. I'm here, I'm ready to go. It's time to react to some voice and harp music written by composers who are not only wonderful musicians, but also wonderful people. Let's see what happens. Uh, first up is 8-Bit Music Theory. The text was chosen by David Bruce himself, and the limitation was 
uh, no phrases may repeat, which is unfortunate because as we all know, a repetition, a repetition, repetition legitimizes. So it's gonna, it's gonna be challenging to make sure that this piece of music is cohesive. Extract from the Wellerman, the, that's a sea shanty, David. Oh my word, it's gonna be hard. Nice. Oh. Well, this is very different. <laughs> it's wild hearing it like this. Nice sense of introduction. Oh, what a beautiful chord. Mm. It makes me feel like I'm in the ocean. It's like a wave. Very, oh, it's so beautiful with the harp. It's a real sense of storytelling in this one. It's building on that melodic idea. I don't think I even realized that this text was a story until now. Ooh, I like that choice of note there. Wow, that line is so cool. That was clever. It's quite like Benjamin Britten, that line. is really good. Ooh. The waves have stopped. These chords give you a sort of sense of conclusion. Coming home. low note. I love that flat six in the chord at the end there. Killed it. <laughs> well, that was super satisfying and beautiful. And I think it connected with me immediately, even though there weren't any repeating phrases. The dramaturgy of it all really pulled me through the piece. It's completely different than the, you know, the meme of late. And it really brought the text to life, which I guess is the purpose of this this whole exercise. It's kind of haunting, like it was, you know, the sirens calling to the sailors across the sea. Way to de-meme the Wellerman. Like not having the the phrases repeat made it more like a story. Like there's more of a narrative element there, which uh, musically I think worked very beautifully. Um, that was beautiful. That was utterly beautiful. The way that the performers perform that piece of music. Mm, mwah, mwah. Hey, Ben. Hello. Nice to spontaneously see you for the first time today. It is nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited to do the project. Um, and David wants me to actually read you the lyric that I chose. My mother-in-law, who painted this painting, is super talented. And she writes these poems. And I'm always telling her I should do something with her poems and set them to music. But this seemed like the perfect opportunity yeah. to... Uh, so anyway, she, she wrote this poem. It's called Lydia's Song. And it says, I'll be lonely in the life that lies ahead for me. This sadness in my heart, it feels so strange. I miss you in so many ways. I can't explain. If only I could see you once again, Lydia, oh Lydia. I'm lonely, but I'm not alone. It's just that I'm left here behind and you've gone home. I'm coming, Lydia. I'm coming home. Yeah. Wow. I think she Dang. wrote it about, um, about her uh, grandma, her, okay. her in-law, that grandma in-law that passed away. So, anyway, nice. I thought that was so pretty. Did she believe that after she dies that she'll, she will go and see them? Is that something she... Yeah, I think so, yeah. They'll be That's together again. That's helpful. And this is going to sound really trivial, but I've been thinking about that about the dog I grew up with. Um, that dog was my sister, and I'll never get her back. And I was thinking, like, how many people who I know now would I be willing to never see again to in exchange for being able to see my doggy again oh, and man. the it's most people and I, I'm not saying that they would die it's just you wouldn't see them they would yeah, get, like, like not be in your life but like you'd have your doggy with you yeah I don't know I it, it would be those that that's a hard thing if if you put it that way that you have to make a choice yeah <laughs> It would be better if you could just keep them all. <laughs> That's the scenario I had. To, I was like, there's got to be a catch you know, if you're getting your doggy back. But yeah, that, that's a beautiful poem. And I'm also supposed to give you a, um, a restriction. Oh, right? yes. A yeah. Rule. Please restrict yeah, so. me. 
dying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please. I'm dying to be restricted. <laughs> It's my favorite part of music is not having my way. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, here's the restriction. It's that you are allowed to only use one non-diatonic chord. You can use that chord, this, the, the one chord that you pick, as many times as you want, but that's the only one you can use. Okay. Everything else has to, has to be diatonic. That's great. I love it. Okay, next is Ben Levin. I'm excited to hear this one. I gave Ben his text. Oh, and he's only allowed one non-diatonic chord. Put the handcuffs on him. Here we go. Oh, that's a pretty melody. Mm. I like those chords on the harp, kind of like a guitar. Man, chords on a harp just sound beautiful. When you think harp, you think the big glissandos, but just some straight up chords sounds so gorgeous. Feels kind of like Celtic harp maybe, or Irish harp. It requires huge control for Mary to sing this, this delicately. Nice and quiet there. Ben always writes the one piece that just stays with me and lodges in my brain. Oh, is that the one? Oh, I like those chords. Oh, that's a... That was a sharp nine chord. Ben, that's jazz. Oh, that's such a nice move. Oh. oh, I love that you focused on that line. The way the melody interacts with the harmony is so, so nice. Pensive. Oh, and then you say her name. Very tender the way her name is intoned there. Oh, you're not going to give us the res resolution, man? <laughs> oh, that's cruelty. <laughs> that's That was beautiful, though. So such a light touch, like really delicate and oh, just gorgeous. I love how it, it ends unresolved. That's so powerful. Gosh, Ben, she's going to she's probably going to cry when she hears that. Thank you so much for bringing bringing her poem to life. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> okay, your text is from a movie poster from the 1935 film The Last Days of Pompeii, and the text goes, A dream of barbaric splendor, a feast of pagan revelry, scenes of startling magnitude, the Pompeii of storied glory, the mighty arena with its combats, earthquake, seething volcano, stricken thousands madly fleeing before its wrath, mightiest of spectacles, the moving background for the most human of great love stories. 
Oh my word. <laughs> so you don't have to use all of that if you, you know, if that's too much, too many words, but, and then a... your um, uh, restriction is that you are going to have to quote Van Halen's eruption at least once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, w- that won't be too hard. I don't think, I mean, the lyric, it's another story, but I think I can quote eruption. So that's a, Okay. Got it. A dream of barbaric splendor, a feast of pagan revelry, scenes of starting So Amy Nolte, this text was chosen by Bit Music Theory. Uh, musical limitation is to quote Van Halen's eruption at least once. At least once. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> oh, this is this is nice. I love how she barbaric and pagan. That's what I'm going for. Feels so like triumphant. The rhythmic. Uh... <laughs> I love how this silly text becomes this quite grand song. <laughs> like a. From a musical or something, I like it. Yeah, it's exactly the vibe I was going for. These musicians are fantastic. Oh, I love those harp chords. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Operatic. I love it. That's just like a timeless tune. It feels like it could be, and I mean this in a really good way, it could be like an introspective number in like a Pixar movie or something. You expect harp and soprano to be like so delicate, but um, the song that Amy wrote is like so intense. You really get the sense of the last days of Pompeii with the setting. Uh, It feels, you know, I guess like, the harp sounds like a liar, a Roman liar, you know? Uh, it wasn't really what I expected also from this harp and soprano pairing, but uh, very cool. <laughs> oh my word. That made me so happy to hear. Oh, I just couldn't have imagined it like any nicer. That's exactly what I was going for. It's so um, schmaltzy. And um, I wanted to write something that if you would have gone to see this movie back in 1935, you might have come out of the movie humming the theme. I think the players were really noticing how a text that seems to be just from a film poster, it's amazing how music can lift things to seem much more meaningful. Now, there was one other moment here. At the end, the harpist Eleanor thought that Amy's piece would enjoy a Hollywood glissando, as it's called, which hearing Amy's description there of trying to write a kind of old school theme tune, I really think fits perfectly. So here's a take just with that different ending. Oh, hey, Internet. <laughs> yeah, um, excuse me, it's a uh, pretty <clears throat> urgent matter. I need to tell you the text for this for your piece where you're going to have the soprano sing whatever I want. Hmm, okay, cool. Is it going to be, uh, is it going to be hotly political? 
Is it going to be yeah. a political hot take? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to have you read uh, various shirts from the people who stormed the Capitol, and you have to here. No, what I'm really doing is quite, <laughs> quite lovely. I think that you'll enjoy. So okay. I'm going to show you. I'm going to share my screen. Ooh, okay. And I'll show you. So there's a person named Matthew Golden, and I think his tweets are the funniest. Uh, <laughs> let's go to my favorite one. Okay. That mo <laughs> that <laughs> moment when the medic who was friendly a few minutes ago sets a boundary and becomes taciturn while suitoring your family members. <laughs> Yay! All right. This is going to become... It. This is going to become a beautiful piece of music, I promise. Yeah. Sure. How, I don't know, but... Uh. Well, for your limitation, for your limitation. Okay, you okay. Have, you have to be pian pianissimo for 40 out of the 60 seconds. Ooh, that's actually good, because then me, that like the 20 seconds at the end, you better better believe that's going to be some double F action. Ooh, yeah. she's going to be I, singing high. Yeah. <laughs> moment when the medic was friendly a few minutes ago Next one is from Adam Neely with text chosen by me. Music makes you feel feelings. Lyrics make you think thoughts. Songs make you feel thoughts. And that's what's going on today. Baby, here is Adam Neely's music with text from Matthew Golden's Twitter. Ooh, beautiful opening chord. Hmm. I love this tweet so much. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, these chords. Oh, this is such a cool texture. Adam's good at writing for harp. Can't go wrong with the Bisbeck Leander. Sounds such a great sound. Ooh, that's a good change. It's like the chordal movements are cool enough on their own, but then playing them up high like that in such a cool texture. That is awesome. Very low in the register, almost the speaking tone. He's setting you up. A musical shock is coming. Ooh, freaking epic! <laughs> yeah yeah ready for harp you gotta use it man oh my gosh what a pluck another one that just stops dead in its track it's hit the 280 character limit <laughs> i can't wait to show this to matthew oh man what a tweet <coughs> so nice hearing a, a real harpist a real harpist do it uh it's killing so killing to use a jazz term killing Uh, so I have your text. So are you aware of the blog Humans of New York? So it's no. a photo blog. There's this guy who goes around and takes pictures oh, yeah. of people and then he asks them like tell their stories and it's really awesome. Well, there's this parody book uh, that's like 
Humans of New York, but it's about cats called Felines of New York. <laughs> and uh, I'm having oh, you right. set uh, one of the, uh, the the stories of the cats in Felines of New York. Fantastic. I'm up for that. Uh, the lady brought these empty boxes home, and I thought, finally, some real furniture. But then she said we're moving to California. She seems kind of stressed about it. I just want the boxes to be empty again. All right. And this is going to be the hard part. Uh, you have to use nothing but the pentatonic scale. Right. Aha, the real challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but you can change keys. You can like go to different places. They can be playing different pentatonic scales, like different, like you know, bi bitonal if you want. The cat music in the pentatonic. Got it. Yeah. Okay, David Bruce, the man himself. So here we go. This one is by David Bruce, my God, my Lord, the only person that I would save in the apocalypse uh, that I would take on my boat, and we would we would both have a good appreciation for bioluminescence and the cool things that will happen at night in the water. And uh, this one, the text is chosen by Adam Neely, and you can only use pentatonic scales, so... I think this is going to be good by default because the pentatonic scale is the best scale objectively and don't don't at me <laughs> That gets your attention right away oh, like a cat prowling this intro That's a nice harp part It's like kind of a percussion or percussive element to those heavy plucks. Oh man. I love a good chord change like that. I like how the harp is interesting and the melody <clears throat> stays on one note. Mm. The harp is so interesting. <laughs> Turned it into the British version of the text. We are moving. Why oh, are we ever moving? Dang. Oh, drama. Wow. Soprano sounds amazing. Ooh, whole range of the harp. Oh, it's nice to hear the starkness of the vocal all by itself. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh my god. 
For me, this was like the cat creeping off and then maybe pouncing on something at the end. So intense. Oh! So intense! I just want them to be empty again, too. <laughs> now. Oh. Do, do, do. Dramatic. Dramatic ending. Man, that was so cool. Another wonderful, humorous one. Uh, meowed it, meowing on the about. That's really clever and funny. And uh, that hard part, Eleanor, as usual, nailing it. It really is the essence of cats. Like, I kind of wish the movie Cats... They would have given Andrew Lloyd Webber the boot and brought in David Bruce, and he could be making the most money of any composer of all time. There's such a wide variety of textures that you're getting out of the harp. The aggressive plucking kind of reminds me of uh, the Colombian uh, harpist Edmar Castaneda. The way that like, the note gets a little bit sharp when you pluck it um, very hard um, kind of reminds me of that style of harp playing. but. I did not expect to hear that, especially <laughs> how dramatic the we're moving to California line ended up going. Um, yeah, general thoughts. Uh, more people should write for soprano voice and harp. It sounds so good. <laughs> I should start writing for that combination more. You know, coming from a jazz background, it's not something that I do that often. Not many jazz harpists um, that are working right now. There is a little bit of a tradition, like uh, Alice Coltrane, uh, fantastic jazz harpist. It's a powerful combination that I wish uh, there would be more written for. That was a lot of fun. Very cool to hear music you wrote played by real people, real like professional musicians, you know. Hearing uh, my pieces played by the badass MFs that you've had on every single project has been every time just this unforgettable highlight for me. I can't believe you keep pulling it off. Just You find the best freaking musicians to do this. It's like Mary and Eleanor are I don't know like how you even know people who do that stuff. I feel like I've just been through like legitimately four different plays. Like I watched four different plays right now. I feel like if you're given the lyrics, maybe it gives you more purpose with the underlying music that you write. Fun project, David. Thanks for asking me to be a part of it. So a really fun project, and thanks again to Mary Bevan and Eleanor Turner. What a fantastic pair of musicians, I hope you'll agree. And thanks to all the composers. Links to all of their channels are below. If you don't know any of them, you're missing out a treat on all of them, so do check them out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.